If you want to know what the top four things are that every wholesale investor should avoid doing so that they can close more deals and won't ruin their reputation, then don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss this. My name is Kurt Davis with Real Estate Wealth Coaching, and today I'm going to cover four important things that every wholesaler should never do. Now, before I get into it, make sure to click on that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, and make sure to leave me a comment at the end of this video to let me know what you learned or what you got out of the video. Okay, wholesale real estate investing is one of the most popular starting points for new investors who are just getting started in real estate investing it has a low barrier of entry meaning there are several wholesale strategies that cost very little and then there are some that can cost much more depending on how aggressive you want to get. Now, it can be a very profitable business if done correctly. Now, like anything, there is a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things. <clears throat> Today, I am going to cover four things that I have seen wholesalers do that could seriously hurt their business, ruin their reputation, and even cost them a lot of business. Now, the first thing you should avoid doing is setting a minimum wholesale fee. Some wholesalers, for example, will say they want to make a minimum of $5,000 or $10,000 per deal. And if the numbers don't work, they won't want to do the deal. Now with an approach like this, you run the risk of losing out on a lot of money. Now it is a great, you know, it's great to want to make that much per deal. But if you can move a deal and say the profit's only $1,000, then move the deal and make the thousand dollars. It's a lot better than zero dollars in profit. Now, on some deals, you'll make way more than expected. The goal here is cash flow, especially if you are investing money into your own business by doing direct mail campaigns, putting out bandit signs, text message marketing, uh, hiring virtual assistants, you know, whatever else you're paying for for your business. The second thing to avoid doing is marketing another wholesaler's property without their permission. Now, in a business where relationships are very important, you don't wanna upset another wholesaler and ruin a relationship. What you might do is approach that wholesaler and ask for permission to send it out. And if they agree, you need to know if you will be marking up the deal to cover your profit, whatever that is, or if they would consider doing a joint venture where essentially you're splitting the profits. The issue with marking up the wholesaler's deal is that most likely you are marketing to a lot of the same buyers. So they will see your price is higher than the wholesaler who has it direct to the seller and they will go with their pricing every single time. Now, if you do a joint venture, most likely they're 50-50 splits. Now, side note, I'm gonna give you an example of a super shady tactic to watch out for. So, if you're the wholesaler and you have the home locked up as the direct to the seller, and another wholesaler wants to joint venture with you and you agree, if they bring the buyer, make sure that the contract for the end cash buyer is the actual buyer themselves, not the joint venture wholesaler's name or their entity. Uh, say there's a $10,000 spread and you would normally both split that making 5,000 each, but your partner says he has an offer for 5,000 less and you agree just to move it. But what you didn't know is they sold it for the asking price and the buyer on the contract that they write up is their entity. Now that is, you know, that is then when the wholesaling is the actual end buyer, they're selling it to them for 5,000. So at the closing, you only make 2,500 and your partner makes 2,500, but they also made another 5,000. So they made 7,500 total and you made 2,500. Something to keep out, keep an eye out for. Okay, the third thing you should not do is pretend to be an actual cash buyer. So if you're at, if you actually don't have the cash to buy the house, 
um, you know, if you present yourself as the actual cash buyer to the seller, then you should be able to close either with your own actual cash, a line of credit, or have a private lender lined up. Giving the seller an excuse on why you can't buy the home simply means you either agreed to buy the home for too much or you were, you were asking too much for trying to sell it, or you know maybe you did not calculate the renovations properly. This gives wholesaling and wholesalers a bad reputation. An alternate approach to this is coming from an angle of helping them sell their home. The conversation would go a little something like this, John, okay, now let's call the seller John for this example. Now John, I work with several cash buyers who are located both locally and all around the country. I would like the opportunity to try and bring you a cash buyer who can close quickly. If I can't bring you a cash buyer within the next 30 days, we can either part ways as friends or you might consider a price reduction and I can send it back out again. Now, if you can approach it like this, what you just did was tell the seller that you are not buying their house, but you want to help bring a cash buyer. It takes a lot of the pressure off and this is essentially your escape clause and if and it won't hurt your reputation. So you will still put the home under contract as usual, but you're just approaching it differently. Now the fourth and final thing uh, I wanna talk about that you should never do is pull a deal from a cash buyer who has already signed your assignment contract. The only reason you would do this that I can come up with is, is you got a higher offer from someone else after the fact. So you decided to get greedy and go back on your word. Now in a business where your word is your bond, you don't want to get a reputation for being dishonest. It's, it's better to just stick with the cash offer that you accepted, close it out and move on to the next deal. Now, if your buyer felt you were going to pull the deal from them, you know, they might record a lien against the home, which could hurt the deal from closing. And now you've burned bridges with two potential cash buyers. So in the end, it's always best to operate your business as professional and honest as you can. Wholesaling can be highly profitable. Make sure to check out some of my other videos where I talk about the many different ways wholesalers can market for finding properties, and also I have another video about how you can do a joint venture. So I will post those video links in the descriptions below. Now, if you like this video, make sure to click that like button and let me know in the comments what you got out of this video. I will reply to all the comments. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.